Now that we got code blocks installed, let's see about how we can debug uh, your program with code blocks. So this is assuming that you already watched your last video and installed code blocks on Windows or Linux and you have GCC and GDB and everything installed and set up. So let's start. So programming without debug is like driving without a car without knowing how to use the brakes. Whenever there is a problem, you just brake. That means stop and see what's wrong with the source code. You can actually see the variable value. It's much easier than guessing what is wrong by staring at the whole source code printout. So that's debugging also allows you to look at somebody else's code and stop and see, okay, what are they trying to do? We're actually having to know everything else in their code. And that's the way it works in the industry. So debugging is an essential part of coding. And, and language without debugger are basically toy languages. How do you debug? First of all, when you compile, you turn on GCC minus fault to fix all the warnings so that basically any errors that are there are something that is a real logical error, not something that's trivial and that the compiler can warn you about. Second is that you add assertions. You include hash include assert.h and then say what, what are you expecting it to be. Uh, you just assert that value. So it's assert g equal to 1 in this case. That means in the debug mode, the program will actually check that g is equal to 1 and if g is not 1 it will stop and say hey like you, all, you have a logic error and then before g your computing g is a gcd of 37 so we are going to use the latest code blocks which version is there right now and you are not going to use obsolete uh, compilers or ids like turbo c or dev c++ and they are gone and code blocks is free and it's pretty good right now Let's look at a program. So you type the following program in the code block called main.cpp and then you have a for loop i equal to 0 to 5 and print out i into i 5 times and return 0. And first thing you can do is click on the in the left column and you get a red dot. Red dot means there's a breakpoint. And a breakpoint means you can it will stop out there and then the program when you run it will stop at this point and you can see the what is happening at that point what is the value of i in this case there's no error but sometimes there'll be an error and you can stop anywhere in the code by putting a breakpoint and we'll go to look at more details as we go along first you build the program also then you, you build the program it says building compiling executable p16.exe and 913 kilobytes and zero errors, zero warnings in two seconds. Then you're going to uh, the thing you can do is you can uh, watch variables. So you say debug edit watches, debug edit watches, and a lot of options out here in debug. You need to know all of them, and they all will come in use. You can't really learn it when you need them. You just need to know beforehand. So what is a watch? So you want to watch the value of i. You say in the edit debugger values, edit debugger watches, you say add, the add button, then you type i, you get this this pop up in which enter the value, the new watch keyword. So you want to see the, val the value of i, to type in i, and you say ok. So during debugging, it will show you the value of i, instead of having to type in every time. Then you just start debugging. So you can start debugging by stepping into or run to cursor. And then you can attach to put the sensor. We we'll look at it later on. And then there are a lot more options out here. And then when the program starts running, we will stop it at, at the breakpoint. There'll be a yellow arrow pointing to the current statement. And then if the watch window is not available, you can right-click and select the panes that are available. So panes are panes are breakpoints, call stack, CPU registers, disassembly, memory dump, running threads, and watches. So in this case, we're interested in watches. So here is doing STL vectors and stuff, you don't care about that. Setting breakpoint. Every time you do something, it shows you in the in the debugger log what is the GDB command. So you can actually run the UI without the 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 UI also from the command line by typing GDB commands. So it's a good place to see how the ID is converting your clicks to uh, you, uh, to GDB commands. So and the I stopped at documents main.cpp line 5 that's where you put a breakpoint okay then 
then there are many options out there. So you, one is that after you stop at a break point, you see the value of i is zero at this point. Local variable i is zero. Function argument is uh, arguments are there. I equal to zero. It says you can go to the next line by pressing F7. You can go to the next instruction in assembly. You can step into a function. You can step out of a function using Shift F7, Shift Control F7. You can turn the break points on and off, or you can just run continue till you reach the cursor again. And how does it do that? It puts a temporary breakpoint. And so it will run and then when it re reaches the current code, it will stop and de debug will transparently remove the breakpoint. And the more complex ways of doing stuff or uh, debugging. And it keeps stepping to the code till i equal to 4 appears. Then i eventually press few more times F7 to go and i equal to 5 will appear in the watch window. And you can press Alt F7 to see the assembly code. So you can see the assembly code, disassembly code, and it takes the object code and disassembles it. And if you have debugging symbols, it will also put put in the variable names out there. So for example, it's saying main, call main out here. And you need to make a small program like this and debug it yourself to get an idea what kind of assembly you're expecting. And then when you're done with debugging, you found a problem and you fix, you can just see uh, top debugger and these are the commands and then these are the, the shortcut keys and you can turn show the smaller windows like call stack breakpoints disassembly examine memory the number of threads we are right now running a single thread program a console program a single threaded but you could have a multi-threaded program also like GUI programs and then CPU registers so you have EAX which is a main register extended A register ex uh, 32-bit register and then ECX the counter register, DX is the destination register, BX is the base point, base register, ESP is the stack pointer and eventually you'll be learn how to so uh, we have all these windows to look at and then there are advanced breakpoints if you're really hard to find a bug we have to use advanced breakpoints what are advanced breakpoints suppose you have a program like this main with something in a local variable i equal to 2 f21 array of size 21 then you call g g is another function with i equal to 2 and f equal to array and then main calls g g takes a takes an integer i and a pointer to a array f then while i is less than 10 you fill in some i into 2 minus i into 2 plus 1 and increment array so this is kind of a complex function it's writing into memory and you're not sure where it's going to write into. So now what will happen when you try to debug and run, it will crash. And it's and this is called it smash the stack. Basically, this F is pointing to a wrong location minus, so it overwrote some part of the stack, the return value, and then everything got trashed, and you can't really see what happened. And uh, this kind of crash is very hard to debug because you lost all your context and so debugger stops but then it's just a big bunch of random data because your stack and the return values are where you came from what the function name is everything got deleted by the overwriting in this f plus plus so what do you do we have to do some advanced breakpoints so what is it uh, advanced so what kind of advanced breakpoints we have and this is a conditional breakpoint so in this case what you have to do is you have to edit a breakpoint you set a breakpoint edit a breakpoint and then you want to say when do you want to break so what you say is a breakpoint edit edit breakpoint and you say break when i is minus i into 2 less than 0 or this expression that we are writing into is less than 0 or is greater than 21 so you want to see when you're going array out of bounds and in this case the array is on the stack so if so the expression this expression is true the debugger will stop then you say run until breakpoint is triggered run and then what happens select the expression say view view in uh, basically and then you run it so what happens out here at this point it will run and then it will stop at some point then you can look at the values what i is so it says i equal to 3 so what you go down and see and and you find and find that the i basically expression is wrong so you fix that okay so in this case you are you are editing a breakpoint but expression is evaluated symbolically it's not really in machine so it's really slow so if you really want to have a faster breakpoint which is a this will be a million times slower than the real 
code because the debugger is actually validating the expression every time you hit the breakpoint. It's not really in the code. And second time breakpoint is available in the CPU itself. It's called a data breakpoint, a hardware breakpoint. And then hardware breakpoints are basically you tell the CPU, hey, I want to stop when this memory location is overwritten or read. So you can have the Intel CPU provides three breakpoints: break on read, break, uh, break on write, or uh, break on read or write. So you want to say, I want to enable, I want to say data breakpoint F21, I want to stop when F21 is written on. So that's the location you don't want to write into. So then you run it. It will run really, f um, in this case it will run really small example. It doesn't matter, but if you had like really huge code, it would matter, the speed would matter. And it also lets you catch uh, things when somebody is writing into your array, but you don't know who's writing, which point of the code, you can put a breakpoint, read or write breakpoint to see uh, how your code is getting used by somebody else in a large uh, amount of large amount of functions so then it will stop at this point you can see who's writing into the wrong well in, into the wrong place and then fix it so the second thing is that uh, code block actually calls into gdb commands so you can see if you enable gdb log window you can see the gdb commands generated by your gui actions so break point is one and then condition is set like this and you want to print output of this thing and then you're adding a watch hardware access read write breakpoint a watch it's called so what are the debugging tips so basically these are things if your program caches as an input input save the input hard code the data causing the problem and then run it put it in a batch file and run it as many times as you want and so the debugging is easy you may want to run them like 100 times before you actually figure out which part of the code you want to fix. Second thing you can do is use binary search to put breakpoints before and after the crash, around the crash to see how far does it run before it actually goes bad. And then when you are in trouble, the code looks uh, having some problem, heavy code, what you do is basically step over the things and watch the variables and see that they are as you expect. If something amiss, you basically know that the code is wrong. And then make a test case and learn how to write unit tests. So basically, uh, save the code and write a unit test so that next time you hit something, you're able to run the test to make sure that okay, your code changes are not uh, crashing the thing again. And third thing is, use CVS if you're on a single user to save, or JIT if you're on a network to save, even on a single server, to, uh, to save uh, copies of your code. Every time there's a problem, you can go back to older version and compare what changed and what was the last time you ran without a problem and find in the time sequence uh, where the problem occurred so and if it's a really hard problem you have to use Valgrind or Purify those are memory debuggers and if they spot memory leaks and uh, mo memory overrides or out of ar array out of bounds reads or write and then save your, whatever you do make notes in a file and put comments explaining the problem so that next time you hit it you know where to look for or somebody else looks at it and put comments in your code and if the comments are like assertions convert them to code instead of having saying hey x is we expect x to be 1 you just assert x equal to 1 and sometimes you get weird error messages you just type into google you'll find what other people did and usually you'll find that it's a common problem in the beginning but eventually you'll hit harder and harder problems so let's see how d this is another tip so whatever is the comment, t is a sum total. So first thing is, instead of putting a t as a sum total as a comment, you just convert it into a variable name, name your variables properly, total sum. So that by reading the user knows exactly what the variable is, instead of having to guess t is total sum. Then instead of saying assume x is greater than 0, you just say assert x is greater than 0. So in debug mode, it will actually check that x is greater than 0. And third thing is, the third tip is keep it short, don't add extra code, x greater than return 1, 0, it can actually be written uh, total sum greater than 0. So code becomes smaller, clearer and comments usually go wrong with time when people change their code but don't keep that comments up to date. Okay, so that's about debugging and then you look at other stuff later.